Well, it is uh, March 7th, 2022. This is Gary Trendle, and it is, uh, I hereby uh, call our planning board meeting to order. Uh, this open meeting of the Hopkins and Planning Board is being conducted remotely consistently with uh, the recently signed an act extending certain COVID measures adopted during the state of emergency. This act includes an extension and, um, until April 1st, and I believe it has just been extended to a slightly later point in time of the remote meeting provisions of the governor's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The new law has two major parts. First, the new law allows public bodies to continue providing live, adequate alternative means of public access to the deliberations of the public body instead of holding meetings in a public place that is openly and physically accessible to the public. Second, the new law authorizes all members of the public body to continue participating in meetings remotely. For this meeting, the planning board is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's web meeting calendar and the board's agenda identifying how the public may join. Additionally, the meeting is being broadcast by each camp through multiple channels. Please note this meeting is being recorded and, it's, uh, and that all attendees are participating by video conference. All supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website via the web meeting calendar, unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda, unless they note otherwise. Before we turn to the first item on the agenda, let me cover some quick ground rules. I think we're pretty well aware of most of this. Not every agenda item will feature public comments. For items with public comments, after members have spoken, I will afford public comments. Please use the raise your hand feature in Zoom. Begin with your name and address, and you will be afforded three minutes for your questions or comments. Finally, each vote taken in the meeting will be conducted by roll call. So let's just check in and see who's here. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Mary Larson Marlowe. Mary Larson Marlowe here. Rob Benson. Don't see Rob yet. Uh, Fran Young. Fran Young here. Jane Moran. Moran here. Dave Paul. Dave Paul here. Sundar Savarman. Tunda Sivraman present. Shahadul Manan. Shahadul Manan here. And Gary Trendle is here. I just got a text earlier from Ron Prefer and he is, um, is uh, unable to join us tonight. Um, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Mr. Gelsich. John Gelsich here. Ms. Pemberton. Stephanie Pemberton here. Thank you, Stephanie. And Mr. Paradis. Bill Paradis and Beta present. Thank you, Phil. Um, all right. Well, we have a uh, we have a quorum, and uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll get started on um, the uh, a couple of quick administrative items before we get into our scheduled hearings for the night. Um, we're hoping these will be reasonably quick. Um, the first one here is uh, an update on in-person meetings. So just to start things off, John, can you just give us the most recent uh, guidance from the Commonwealth on the subject? Sure. So um, remote meetings have been allowed until July 15th, but Hopkinson has recently this past week uh, removed the requirement for masks and is now allowing boards to meet in person should they choose to do so. All right, thanks, John. Um, so I guess, um, let me just say that at some point we are gonna have to go back to meeting in person. Um, and I'm really uh, just wanna take a minute and get some input from the planning board as to thoughts on when we do that, assuming that it would be sometime um, between April and June. Um, so I, I don't think we, I don't think we need to spend a ton of time on this, but just want to kind of test the pulse. And does anybody have a strong preference, um, as to when we come back in person? Mr. Chair. Yes. Go ahead, Brian. Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm cool either way with Barbara, the board wants to go in terms of coming back. My question is, is it all or nothing? Meaning do we all have to be in or is, could there be a hybrid type of approach or, or is there any thought to that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, um, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, but we will have a, a hybrid option, um, but the chair, and I believe the, well, this is post July, 
Um, so when we are back to requiring in-person meetings, the chair and I believe uh, a majority or a quorum of the body must be physically present. Um, and the good news, actually two thoughts. Number one, um, I know that our um, video conferencing capabilities have much improved in the past couple of years. Um, secondly, uh, what John and I have discussed is when we do go back to meeting in person, we'd like to do it at the HCAM studios, which I think is going to have the best capabilities for um, a hybrid environment. Great. Thank you. Uh, through the chair. Through the chair. Um, yes, go ahead, Siddharth. Uh, is it, uh, it's a variation of the uh, all or nothing question, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, does every meeting need to be in person? In other words, can we have a cadence like an office where um, every other meeting could be in person and the alternative could be a, a remote option? So we have one meeting per month um, in person and the other meeting uh, being remote. So... Um... At this point, as of July 15th, uh, there is a requirement that all meetings need to be in person. Okay. Okay. So, so let's do this. I'm just thinking about this and I'm going to propose, um, I'm going to propose that we go back to in-person meetings. Um, that's funny. I'm just looking at the next meetings. Um, and I was thinking after uh, April break, after marathon week, the next meeting after that would actually be, um, I think it's going to be town meeting May 2nd. Um, but uh, I'm going to, I guess my initial thought, I, I think the remote works fairly well for us. I'm not, um, and just given travel requirements and whatnot, I'm going to propose that we actually go back to in-person meeting um, after town meeting. I would agree with that, Mr. Chair. I'd almost maybe even look at it after the election, but I could do it e e either way, right? You're starting off fresh with a new board and then be consistent, but I think that's a pretty good okay. proxy. People comfortable with that? I, I don't, you know, again, we can, we can review if things change. Um, I think that remote's been working fairly well for us. So I'm not necessarily feeling the urgency to get back to in-person meetings, but if the board is okay with that, then we'll go ahead and, and move on. Yep. Any further thoughts works. before I do? Works for me. Agreed. Thank you. The chair works for me too. Okay. Um, the second administrative piece that we'll cover first is um, a very brief update on 71 Franklin Road. This is the solar project there and um, don't intend to have any discussion on this tonight, um, but I do just want to bring it to the board's attention that the uh, developer from Seaboard Solar has, um, I think, very thoughtfully given us an update as to as to where things stand on that project, um, and uh, just hit on a couple of highlights really quickly. Um, first is that they have been um, they have been uh, in communication with our zoning department, with Chuck Cadlick and Mike Shepard. Um, they do intend to start clearing trees uh, for the project. Um, they uh, have also met with John and with uh, Kimberly from the, our conservation officer. Um, and I think they very thoughtfully listed out, um, even though they are some parts of the a process require some notifications and other checks and balances and things. Um, they've outlined exactly which of the conditions they're going to conform to, even though they haven't had a, a building permit yet, um, as well as the things that they will implement after the fact. So I, I didn't describe that very well, um, but I think you all have the letter. Um, there is still um, some active litigation um, that they need to resolve, but they they uh, they would like to get started on it, and it's certainly within their right to do the things that they have that they have outlined. Um, I'm gonna again ask on John if I anything to add to that or anything that I've misrepresented. I, I don't think I described that as well as I could have, but um, it's a nice FYI for us. Um, they're working with the town. They're working with our building inspectors. Uh, they're doing things that they're legally entitled to do. Um, and they're going to incorporate um, the re required conditions and check-ins and whatnot, um, even though they don't yet have a building permit um, for the project.
questions or comments from the board? We're not going to take any public comments on this one right now, but anything from the board? No, I thought you did a really good job, Gary. Thank you. Okay. Um, then uh, what we'll do, we'll hold off on the uh, on the meeting minutes until the end, um, but let's go ahead and get into our hearings. So at this point, I will entertain a motion to open the public hearings for the Laborers Training Center Site Plan Review and Stormwater Management Permit, uh, as well as the hearing for 129 Hayden Row, AKA Marathon Elementary, um, and hearing for Connolly Farm OSLPD. Uh, Mary moved. Larson Marlowe, so moved. I did my next so this Okay. All right. Motion from Mary, second from Shahadul. Um, we'll go ahead and take a vote. Mary, how do you vote? Mary Larson Marlowe, yes. Rob? Rob Benson, yes. Fran? Fran Young, yes. Jane? Jane Moran, yes. Dave? Dave Paul, yes. Siddhar? Sundas Raman, yes. Shahadul? Edelman, yes. And Gary Turnell is a yes. Uh, all right, so let's do this. Um, George, if it's okay with you, um, let's go ahead and start with beta. Um, Cause I, I'd love to kind of, there's a couple of open remaining items from beta. And I'm wondering if maybe it might be most efficient for us to start there. Fine, Sorry, what was that George? Fine, however you want to do it. Okay. All right, Phil. Yes. Do you um do you want to just quickly walk through the remaining open items? So and, uh, um, I will say that that's just so that folks know, um, this is somewhat late breaking. Um, the uh, this is the letter from today that Beta has sent over. Um, so if you haven't had a chance, that's one of the reasons we're going to go through and, and talk through it. But um, sorry, Phil, I didn't mean to, to interrupt you there. Yes. So, um, yeah, as, uh, as you mentioned, we got a, uh, a submittal this morning um, on, on a few of the remaining items. And um, so that closed out most of the items. There are um, a few recommended conditions, but I think the only outstanding one that I have in my head is it's this very small one uh, on page uh, six, G2. Um, so there was a, a, a restoration plan and we had a comment in our stormwater <coughs> review with the uh, Conservation Commission. And this was one of the things, uh, I think it's just a matter of submitting the plan um, they probably already have it in the, in the, in the, on the plan. So, um, other than that's that, the, uh, installation of loam in the restoration area. Correct. Yes, George. Yeah. The plan dated, um, two, three, 2022 has a box indicating loam, uh, with an arrow going towards that area. Um, I, I will note that that area was brought up as a conservation matter because the laborers used to store snow there um, in the 60s or 70s. And the conservation asked us not to do that anymore. So we had um, agreed to that. They have installed a curbing along there and some fence to preclude that. And the area does have the loam and we're putting in some additional rhododendrons which will be dealt with either the 15th or two weeks after that with conservation. But that plan on 2322 does have that note, um, Mr. Paradise. I, I don't know, it should be there. It's on the plan yeah, I have. Yeah. It would have been good for to respond to the comment and let me know where it is. I, when I read that, there was a, like a two um, paragraph comment and it seemed to say that underneath everything was taken care of, but maybe I misread that. Um, but in any event, the loan note is there. Okay. I don't see it. In plan? What plan is it? Restoration plan dated August 14th, 2020. 
revised um, 2322 for added plantings. On when did you submit that? Do you, do you remember? That would have been on uh, with the 23 uh, letter that I sent. Okay. I have it, I think. We'll stipulate that it has to be there anyway, but uh, it is on the plan. Um, all right, so, so I saw a few other notes here that I just want to make sure we're closed out on. And um, I think the first was on Z2, is a comment from beta to CZ4. Um, Z4 reads, indicate floor area in the headquarters and other buildings to be used as offices, required parking for offices, use it, uses three spaces per thousand square feet of gross floor area. Uh, the site, and let's see, um, floor area of various buildings and the attendant parking is unique on the site and differs from a typical commercial development. The site is a campus and the trainees typically have and will park in the dormitory parking area. And Beta's comment is deferred to the planning board on this, this issue. Um, if I recall, the rationale there was that collectively on the site, there are more than enough spots. Um, so even though on a particular building, it could be a little light, there are sufficient spots elsewhere. Is that the rationale, George? Yes, and also we don't want a lot of traffic uh, traveling through the site. So we kind of limited the parking at each one of these buildings so that we don't have the uh, trainees going um, and eating up all the parking at that location. Those locations, who van them around and they do move from yep. building to building during the day. Got it. I especially having, having been on the sidewalk and seeing the amount of parking, I'm comfortable with that. I don't. The, are the other members of the planning board have thoughts otherwise? Uh, to the chair, I think yes. that makes sense. Uh, one question I um, wanted to ask is. Uh, the disabled parking, is that impacted by that? Meaning the proximity to the building that might create inconvenience? There is uh, three park, I'm sorry, four handicap uh, spaces at the uh, front building, one in the rear and the out front. And then there are handicap spaces at all the other buildings for that particular eventuality. But generally speaking, um, the uh, buildings that are on the site have the requisite number of handicapped parking based on the amount of um, parking spaces. And their right. proximity is comfortable to, to the buildings. I yes. yes. Thank you. All right, any other questions about parking? No? Yeah. Okay. Um, Z9, uh, indicate proposed measures for screening of fire tanks and pump houses at new headquarters building. Um, and uh, the comments here that screening of fire tanks and pumps are, as previously mentioned, a function of the laborers program of landscaping. They've been installed and maintained as an exemplary landscape on the property and will continue to do so. Uh, again, I'd argue that uh, based on how the, the property has been maintained to date, um, I'm comfortable allowing a little bit of leniency there on the on that particular item, but um, want to check the pulse of the other planning board members. I agree with you, Gary, through the chair. Um, they've been great neighbors. They're very accommodating. It's a beautiful property, and they've done a great job. All right, so I'm gonna interpret the no additional comments that we are uh, comfortable with regards to Z9. So through, through the chair though, Mr. Chair. Yes, friend. Just, uh, is there some plan or, uh, to put forth some degree of screening? They talk about you know install and uh, maintaining landscaping, but it doesn't necessarily specifically reference what the uh, what that would actually look like to to screen for the fire tanks and pump houses. 
George? Um, we, we have what we call landscape framework plans, which um, seek to show a concept of um, heavy trees and shrubs and, and planting beds in the areas of these uh, locations, not specifically calling out plants and trees other than in a few locations where we have to meet a certain number of trees per building or parking area. Um, those are in the uh, interior of the site who were taken down, um, you know, some trees and working in open areas. But the um, individual um, planting beds and shrubs for um, shielding are on that framework plan as a, for example, line of um, evergreen trees or a line of evergreen shrubs that go along. And in a specific example is in front of the patio area of the building to shield it from East Street. So there are some drawings for that, but we didn't get as specific as perhaps you would think necessary for a new site. So through the chair, yep. maybe I just ask the applicant as they continue to kind of evolve with those drawings, that there is something in there that does look to address the, the screening as indicated there against the the, pad, the, the, uh, the tanks and the pump That's all. We could accept that as a, as a condition. I think that's a good call, Fran. Thank you for asking the question. And uh, again, I think what's most important to us is the, the screening. So um, we can afford some flexibility to the applicant and let's just make sure that we include a condition that it is sufficiently screened. Great. Everybody comfortable with that? Any objections to that approach? Uh, Feel free to nod your head or... Good. Through the chair. Thumbs up. Yes, John. Can you just um, kind of, so I can write it down, say what the condition would be? Yes. May I assist? Oh, what's that, George? May I assist? Sure, please do. Upon the installation of the, uh, the facilities, we will come in with a laborer's plan or uh, the plantings that will go around it two weeks prior to them engaging in the plantings. Uh, I guess my thought was less about the actual planting details and more around the notion that they will provide sufficient screening of the, in particular, the fire tanks and pump houses. That's where I was going. So I, I assumed oh. it was for screening that. Yeah. But we will provide a plan for that screening okay. of those facilities before we put them put the plantings in once the machinery is in. Okay. They'll choose the plants they want at that particular point in time. That's part of their operation. If that works. John, are you catching the gist of it? Yeah, I think so. So fire okay. tanks and what was the other item? Fire tanks and pump houses. Yeah. Um, let's see, L13 um, with regards to signage. And uh, the request from beta was that provide locations and details of existing and proposed site signage. And the comment is that signage is as shown on the fire department material consisted of a single direction board at the entrance to the site. Um, with the comment from beta signage locations provided, however, no details are provided and beta defers to the board if this is sufficient. There, there were some details provided in the latest uh time before this that was sent to the fire department for their review and the building inspector for building um, address assignments. Um, I had talked with the fire, I had emailed the fire chief last week um, pending walking the site, but apparently they went and looked at it themselves and said they would 
um, be at the meeting tonight to discuss anything relative to that. But there was a signage system um, created with details on it that was sent to them. Thanks, George. And I see the is the fire department here. Yeah, support you. Yeah, I'm here. Um, Chief Miller did not pass along anything with regards to any of the signage requirements. I know uh, the building inspector will be doing all the building numbering, um, but I'm not aware of any of the signage requirements as of right now to discuss it. There was a um, little plan that went along with it that had um, more from the very beginning that had the addresses for they indicated last time Eversource um, assignment of buildings for services that has morphed into that particular plan. Uh, individual posts on the uh, areas just in front of each building and a plaque on each building, plus the aforementioned um, basic directory at the entrance to the site. I think anything will be a uh, great improvement from where we are now. And I know that was one of the goals at the beginning of this project was to make sure all buildings were numbered and labeled. So I think we're moving in the right direction. Thank you. So Thank I'm you. gonna suggest maybe we, I don't wanna let that slow this up. So I'm gonna suggest that maybe we condition that as well um, with the verbiage that, uh, that uh, the fire department shall review and approve uh, signage plan prior to uh, occupancy. Occupancy. I would say so. Board comfortable with that? Yeah. <clears throat> so through the chair, I've got it written as the fire department shall review and approve signage plan prior to issuance of certificate of occupancy just so that we actually have a deadline. And then um, do we wanna say something about uh, approval maybe in the form of a letter? Is that kind of understood? I think that's implied. Okay. Okay. Any other, and, and, and Phil, were you able to go back and-, and um, Yes, yes, I, found, I did find the note, yep. Okay. And, and Phil, I just want to say I'm, I'm grateful to you uh, turning on this uh, in a day. Um, I'm not going to lie, George, given that we have uh, we met a month ago, I, I would have expected uh, your updates to come to beta a little bit sooner because um, one day turnaround is is, uh, is pretty tight for us. Um, well, thank I'm you. I'm glad that, that, that beta was able to get through it. Yes, thank you. Um, okay. So if we go back to our public hearing outline, um, that brings us to the standards and findings. Um, let's end up flipping through lots of paper here. So um, just a reminder for folks on the decision criteria, the decision criteria for the major site plan review is that the board must determine if the proposed application conforms to the site plan standards as contained in section 210.136.1 of the zoning bylaw. Um, and the decision criteria for the stormwater management permit is that the board must determine if the proposed work complies with the Hopkinton stormwater regulations, which in turn require compliance with mass DEP stormwater standards. If waivers are requested, the board must determine whether it is appropriate to grant them based on whether the action is allowable by federal, state, and local statutes and regulations in the public interest and not inconsistent with the purpose and intent of the bylaw. Um, and then as far as findings go, um, John so kindly drafted uh, updated findings um, based on our discussion at the last meeting uh, for the major site plan, the draft is that the board finds the proposed major project site plan conforms to the site plan standards as described in section 210.136.1 of the zoning bylaws, with the exception of uh, one waiver, which is hereby granted, as it has been determined that the granting of this waiver is in the public interest and will not be inconsistent with the intent of the zoning bylaw. And that was section 210.136.M 
requiring sidewalks be constructed along the entire frontage of the site. Additionally, the board finds the following, that the height of the, that the heights of the proposed buildings will not conform to zoning requirements. However, the zoning enforcement officer has determined that the heights are considered reasonable for the applicable uses, which is allowed as an educational use. There are multiple parking lots on site that will accommodate the proposed uses and that the fire department has concurred with the opinion that the pond adjacent to the dormitory building should be dredged. Any suggested revisions or other thoughts on those findings? I, I think they capture the main points that we would want to document as part of the findings of this project review. Um, on the stormwater front, the, the proposed findings is that the board defines the proposed, that the proposed work will comply with the Hopkinton stormwater regulations. Um, and, uh, Sorry, with the exception of the following waivers, which are hereby granted as the grant of these waivers is in the public interest and will not be inconsistent with the intent of the stormwater regulations. And uh, that was uh, the chair, no waivers. No waivers. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. Going through and making sure. All right, so there are no waivers to the stormwater management permit. You guys good with those draft findings? Thumbs up. Um, conditions. So we do have lots of conditions of which I will be reading it aloud. This is my favorite part of this process. So um, we will start with the conditions for the site plan. Number one. After finding that it was in the public interest and not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the site plan standards, the planning board waived strict compliance with the following provisions of 210.136.1. The waivers of this provision allow the construction of the development as shown in the approved plans. A waiver from section 210.136.m to require sidewalks along the entire frontage of the site has been granted. Two, the director of municipal inspections inspects projects under construction for compliance with the approved decision of site plan review. This includes the driveway, roadway, and infrastructure construction shown in the plan if applicable. If the director of municipal inspections determines at any time before or during construction that a registered professional engineer or other such outside professionals required to assist with the inspections of the stormwater management system or any component of the site plan, the applicant shall be responsible for the cost of those inspections. Three, all construction activities shall adhere to the applicable local, state, and federal laws and regulations regarding noise, vibration, dust, sedimentation, and the use of interference with or blocking of town roads. Uh, four, the applicant shall be responsible for mitigating all construction-related impacts, including erosion, siltation, and dust control. The applicant shall maintain all portions of any public way used for construction access, free of soil, mud, or debris deposited due to use by construction vehicles associated with the project, and shall regularly sweep such areas as directed by the Director of Municipal Inspections in consultation with DPW Director. Five, the applicant shall regularly remove construction trash and debris from the site in accordance with good construction practice and the construction management plan. No tree stumps, demolition material, trash, or debris shall be burned or buried on the site. Six, all exterior lighting within the development project, whether shown on the approved site plan or required by the Massachusetts State Building Code, shall be shielded, directed downward and not upward or outward, and shall not spill onto adjacent property. Seven, all fixed mechanical equipment on the site shall be screened from view from the ground. Such screening shall be sufficient in the opinion of the Director of Municipal Inspections. Eight, if construction is not commenced within three years of the date of filing of the site plan decision with the town clerk, approval shall be automatically rescinded unless such time is extended by the board. For the purpose of this condition, the term commence shall mean the commencement of site work. Nine, a completed sign construction management plan shall be submitted to the planning board prior to the commencement of any site work. The applicant shall also submit a revised full plan set, which incorporates all the modifications made during the public hearing process and any required in this decision. 10, a completed signed long-term operation and maintenance plan shall be submitted to the planning board prior to the commencement of construction. This can be combined with the construction management plan if preferred by the applicant. 11, a signed illicit discharge statement shall be provided to the planning board prior to construction. 12, erosion and sedimentation control measures shall be implemented during the construction period in accordance with the approved site plan and the construction management plan. If they are found to be inadequate, the applicant shall immediately correct any deficiencies. 
13, the planning board shall receive a sign off confirming that the site contractor and any major subcontractors have received the construction management plan prior to the commencement of any site work. 14, construction may occur only between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday through Friday and Saturdays between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., person to Chapter 141, Article I of the Town of Hopkins General Bylaws. 15, the applicant shall submit final ELS built plans to the planning board prior to the issuance of the certificate of occupancy. 16, the applicant developer shall provide the principal planner with a project point of contact and construction information prior to the issuance of the building permit. This point of contact information shall be kept current through correspondence to the principal planner until the final certificate of occupancy is issued or construction is otherwise considered complete. 17, the applicant shall provide the board with revised drawings, including the following revisions. Uh, A, two handicapped parking spaces uh, shall be shown where required. B, the height of the proposed buildings in addition shall be shown on the plans. And C, a photometric plan showing a lighting acceptable to the abutting neighbor uh, shall be provided. Through the chair. Yes, John. I believe that condition may be unnecessary now. Uh, the full condition 17? Yes, uh, Phil, I believe all those were supplied, right? Correct. Okay. So we will scratch that one. Um, and then we had two new conditions. Um, John, do you want to read off what you had sure. drafted there and, uh, with regards to the, uh, the screening around the fire tank, tank and pumps sure. and the signage? The applicant will provide, or I should say, the applicant shall provide a plan showing proposed plantings, showing sufficient screening of fire tanks and pump houses two weeks prior to these plantings being installed. And the other condition is the fire department shall review and approve the signage plan prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. All right, any further conditions that we should consider? I mean, I know the big ones that we had talked about were the, the lighting, the screening, the noise. I think we've addressed those in some capacity through these discussions. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read through the stormwater conditions and then we'll um, move forward in our process. So uh, stormwater conditions. Number one, all erosion and sediment control shall comply with the following performance criteria. A, minimize total area of disturbance and protect natural features in soil. B, Sequence activities to minimize simultaneous areas of disturbance, mass clearings, and grading of the entire site shall be avoided. Good ad, John. Uh, minimize peak rate of runoff in accordance with the Massachusetts stormwater standards. D, minimize soil erosion and control sedimentation during construction, provided that prevention of the erosion is preferred over sedimentation control. E, divert uncontaminated water around disturbed areas. F, maximize groundwater recharge. G, install and maintain all erosion and sediment control measures in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications of good engineering practices. H, prevent off-site transport of sediment. I, protect and manage on and off-site material storage areas, overburden and stockpiles of dirt, borrow areas or other areas used solely by the permitted project are considered a part of the project. J, comply with applicable federal, state, and local laws and regulations, including waste disposal, sanitary sewer or septic system regulations, and air quality requirements, including dust control. K, prevent significant alteration of habitats mapped by the Massachusetts Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program as endangered, threatened, or of special concern. Estimated habitats of rare wildlife and certified vernal pools and priority habitats of rare species from the proposed activities. Uh, L, institute interim and permanent stabilization manager, measures, which shall be instituted on a disturbed area as soon as practicable, but no more than 14 days after construction activity is temporarily or permanently ceased on the portion of the site. M, uh, properly manage on-site construction and waste materials. N, prevent off-site vehicle tracking of sediments. O, dust shall be controlled at the site. And P, divert off-site runoff from height erodible soils and steep slopes to stable areas. Two, the project shall comply with the following erosion and sediment control requirements. A, prior to any land disturbance activities commencing on the site, the developer shall physically mark limits of no land disturbance on the site with tape, signs, or orange construction fence, 
so the workers can see the areas to be protected. The physical marker shall remain in place until a certificate of completion has been issued. B, appropriate erosion and sediment control measures shall be installed prior to soil disturbance. Measures shall be taken to control erosion within the project area. Sediment and runoff water shall be trapped and retained within the project area. Well and areas and surface water shall be protected from sediment. C, sediment shall be removed once the volume reaches one quarter to half the height of the hay bale. Sediment shall be removed from silt fence prior to reaching the load bearing capacity of the silt fence, which may be lower than one quarter to one half the height. D, sediment from sediment traps or sedimentation ponds shall be removed when design capacity has been reduced by 50%. E, soil stockpiles must be stabilized or covered at the end of each workday. Stockpile side slopes shall not be greater than two to one. All stockpiles shall be surrounded by sediment controls. F, disturbing, disturbed areas remaining idle for more than 14 days shall be stabilized with weed, with seeding, wood chips, bark mulch, tarpaulins, or other approved methods. G, for active construction areas such as borrow or stockpile areas, roadway improvements in areas within 50 feet of a building under construction, a perimeter sediment control system shall be installed and maintained to contain soil. H, a tracking pad or other approved stabilization method shall be constructed at all entrance exit points of the site to reduce the amount of soil carried under roadways and off the site. Um, scratch the second part of that written because that is, does not apply to us. Uh, I, permanent seeding shall be undertaken in the spring from March through May and in late summer and early fall from August to October 15th during the peak summer months and in the fall after October 15th when seeding is found to be impractical, appropriate temporary stabilization shall be applied. Permanent seeding may be undertaken during the summer if plans uh, provide for adequate mulching and watering. J, all slopes steeper than three to one as well as perimeter dikes, sediment basins or traps and embankments must upon completion be immediately stabilized with sod, seed, and anchored straw mulch or other approved stabilization measures. Areas outside of the perimeter sediment control system must not be disturbed. K, temporary sediment trapping devices may not be, must not be removed until permanent stabilization is established in all contributory drainage areas. L, all temporary erosion and sediment control measures shall be removed after final site stabilization. Disturbed soil areas resulting from the removal of temporary measures shall be permanently stabilized within 30 days of removal. Whew. Two more to go. Uh, three, a minimum of seven days prior to the start of construction, a detailed construction sequence uh, shall be submitted to the Hopkinton principal planner by the site contractor for review and approval. The approved construction sequence shall be followed throughout the course of the construction and shall be altered only when prior review by and written approval from the principal planner. Four, a copy of the stormwater pollution prevention plan shall be provided to the board prior to the building permit. Five, all required stormwater pollution prevention plan stormwater construction site inspection report shall be submitted to the principal planner within 14 days of each inspection. Six, an adequate stockpile of erosion control materials shall be on site at all times for emergency or routine replacement and shall include materials to repair or replace silt fences, hay bales, stone filters, berms, or other devices planned for use during construction. Seven, soil testing and excavation of the site stormwater basins must be observed by the board's engineer prior to laying lane, loam and seed. And eight, all stormwater basins must be cleared once the site is stabilized. Comments or questions on those proposed conditions? Uh, through the chair. Yes, Fran. So I'm going to take it back, and this is probably more for our principal planner. He mentioned that uh, number 17, uh, that the um, the revised drawings, including the revisions of the two handicap parking, the height of the proposed building, and the photometric plan shown, acceptable lighting the abutters. That last one, I just wanted to make sure. Maybe there was was there feedback from the abutters that um, that isn't acceptable. That the plan was acceptable to, to them. So through the chair, we haven't heard back from haven't heard from the abutters. We didn't reach out to them specifically, but their comments were that they just don't want the light shining in their house. Yeah. So the lighting not doing that, we would assume would be acceptable. Okay. And uh, just to add to that, Fred, I think condition six covers it that the lighting shall be shielded director downward and not upward or outward and shall not spill onto adjacent property. No, yeah, I, between the two of them, hopefully it's covered. I just wanted if there was any feedback directly from the abutter because it calls them out specifically by name. So that, that's all, and it sounds like it's covered here on these two, so I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Oh, through the chair. Yes. Uh, 
There was a reference to related to loam installation in Beira's report. And uh, I know there were quite a few conditions for sedimentation related. Does that cover with those conditions or does it need to be included um, explicitly? I was just wondering. Um, I think that the, the condition that, that Beta raised earlier, they, the fact that it's on the drawing, it just took a little while to find that drawing. I, I think it's addressed, Phil? Correct, correct. Okay. Thank you. All right, and I, I, I do want to take a moment and just acknowledge um, our town staff and John for um, continued progression in those conditions. It's a lot to read, but I think it's also for better or for worse, a function of lessons learned along the way. Um, so I feel like every time I read that, there's a, a few a few modifications or adaptations, but um, it's all from, from past experience that we continue to evolve. Well done. You can see why that's your most favorite part of the meeting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Um, so those are our conditions. Um, I do want to open it up for uh, final public comment. If there's anybody from the public that wants to comment on this, um, you can raise your hand or turn on your camera and wave at us. And if not, then um, we'll go ahead and move to our votes. Um, sorry, I need to get a little. Um, so we'll start with the major site plan review. And uh, at this point, I will entertain a motion that the board approves the site plan um, with the conditions that were previously read aloud by the chair. So moved, Mary Larson Marlow. Under Sivraman seconded. Any further discussion? All right, then we'll go ahead and, uh, sorry. Um, I'm gonna ask we take that back because we need to vote on the, John, can we vote on the findings and the approval at the same time? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna revise that um, and state that uh, I'll entertain a motion that the board uh, approves the findings uh, and conditions uh, as previously read aloud. Mary Larson Marlowe, so moved as amended. Tunda Sivraman, seconded as amended. All right, and if we've got no further discussion. Through the chair. Yes, John. Just to be nitpicky and to approve the site plan, right? Ah. Did we include that before? Um. No, I dropped it between my first and second. So let me try that again. Uh, I will entertain a motion that the board uh, approve the findings and conditions for the uh, site plan uh, with the conditions uh, previously read aloud by the chair. Does that work? No? Um, I would say approve the site plan with the findings and conditions as read aloud. Okay. I will entertain a motion that the board approve the site plan um, with the findings and conditions as previously read aloud by the chair. So moved, Mary Larson Marlow as amended. So in the Sivram and seconded. All right, um, let's go ahead. If there's no further discussion, we'll go ahead and take a vote. Uh, Mary, how do you vote? Mary Larson Marlow, yes. Rob? Rob Benson, yes. Fran? Randy Young, yes. Jane? Moran, yes. Dave? Dave Paul, yes. Sundar? Sundar Sivram, yes. Shahadul? Kaidul Manan, yes. And Gary Turnbull is a yes. Motion carries unanimously. Um, and then the second one would be that I will entertain a motion that the board approve the stormwater management permit with the findings and conditions as read aloud previously by the chair. 
Mary Lars Marla, so moved. Tunda Sivraman seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mary, how do you vote? Mary Larson Marlow, yes. Rob? Rob Benson, yes. Fran? Randy Young, yes. Jane? Jane Moran, yes. Dave? Dave Paul, yes. Siddhar? Tunda Sivraman, yes. Shahadul? Harry Dunmanan, yes. And Gary Trendle is a yes. Motion carries, also unanimous. Um, and uh, on that, uh, we can go ahead and uh, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing for the Laborers Training Center. Mary Larson Marla, so moved. I didn't mind that second. All right, assuming no further discussion, Mary, how do you vote? Mary Larson Marla, yes. Rob? Rob Benson, yes. Fran? Randy Young, yes. Jane? Jane Moran, yes. Dave? Dave Paul, yes. Sundar? Sundar Raman, yes. Shahadul? Manan, yes. And Gary Trindle is a yes as well. George, thank you. Um, look forward to seeing the uh, evolution of that site and uh, best of luck to you. Thank you very much on behalf of the laborers. Thank you as well. All right. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Good luck. Good night. Okay. Um, let's move to the Marathon Elementary School. And I see a few familiar faces here. Um, and I don't know between somewhere between Susan and Tim and James. Um, who's going to be speaking on behalf of the project? Uh, Jim Barrett and Lee Rich and uh... Uh, if we uh, so need, uh, Chelsea Christensen from Niche Engineering and Ty Johnson from our landscape engineer, I'm sorry, landscape architect, Warner Larson, and possibly from the school, Timothy, Tim uh, Person or Susan Rothermich. Okay. Um, so I know that um, my hope for tonight is really to get through uh, an, uh, the overall introduction of the project. Um, we have allotted uh, 30 minutes of the agenda, so we're certainly not going to get through all of it tonight. Um, but um, given that we typically have quite a bit of interest in these types of projects, uh, it's great to get it out in front. Um, and uh, we'll uh, get through that introductory period, that introductory information, and, and we'll go from there. But um, Lee, do you want to, uh, to kick things off with just giving us a brief introduction of the project itself? Actually, uh, uh, Jim and I discussed that Jim would uh, start us. Okay, great. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, if and and I should say too, if you if you have a desire to share your screen, um, we're more than happy to uh, to look at the visuals that you have to go along with it. That would be great. We we appreciate that opportunity and uh, wanted to uh, thank the uh, the uh, site plan review. Commission the opportunity to take a look at the uh, proposed addition to the Marathon School. Um, this uh, project really uh, serves as a four classroom addition uh, to the uh, Marathon School that had been completed, well, started back in 2014, 2015 and completed uh, in 2017. Lee, could you go to the next slide, please? So the existing marathon school um, as a composition, primarily a uh, ground face block in two tonal colors, um, aluminum materials, uh, aluminum window systems in both the, uh, the wing shown here, the B wing with the green windows and the lower wing to the right with the red windows, main entry. Uh, we also do have uh, coping and flashing in aluminum materials. And the next slide, Lee. And really the, the focus of our work um, as we look at this plan uh, is to the west end of the building in the highlighted area. 
and in that zone resides the four classroom addition uh, and a stair tower element to help support it. Um, the intent of Hopkinton Public Schools is that this addition uh, be done very much uh, in the spirit of the existing building, uh, both in fit and finish, but also in accommodation afforded within the uh, various classrooms that are being added here. Next slide, Lee. This is it. Yep. Do you want to go ahead? You can take it. Certainly, certainly. So uh, this is our landscape plan. Uh, it shows uh, the edge of the, the end of uh, the B-wing. Uh, this dashed line is representing where the end of the building is right now. Uh, the uh, new area is right here. We have two classrooms, similar to this section right here, two classrooms on the first floor, which are the kindergarten classrooms, and two classrooms right above it on the second floor, which are the first grade classrooms. Uh, you can see ghosted underneath this building is a planting area where the students and the teachers uh, do some planting. That would be relocated over here. Uh, the existing access road here and the uh, main drive here for uh, uh, the fire lane will not be touched with this new addition. Um, so, so the road work is basically the same. Uh, the building ends, as we said, right here. And this is going to be the, uh, just a quick sketch of what the rest of the building will look like. The colors will continue out. The classrooms each have uh, three windows, and so they will mirror uh, what we see here. This stairwell that's set back will have that same look as this area here. The only difference that's not shown in this area is per the floor plan, and we'll show you that in a, in a second or two, there will be one window punched open here for the small classroom on the second floor at the present end of the building and one here for another small group uh, area. So uh, looking at the front of the building, this is the area that we were just looking at. That's that stair tower there. And this is that section that will have those two windows. This rectangle here will be set back. And then this will be the two classrooms on the south face, which is the front face of the, of the school. And then this is that setback. Looking at the building from, from where the cursor is back this way, this is what you'll see. Um, these, this section right here to there will be this uh, stairwell. This will be the end of the corridor, which is pretty much identical to what it is right now. Uh, and this will just be the side of the classroom. And this will be the side of the back classroom. And then up here, you'll see what it looks like from the north side looking back. This again will not have any windows. This is that stairwell. And then this will be the two classrooms similar to what we see here on the back of the building. It will continue right across there. There'll be a control joint. The colors will continue. But the whole purpose is that we want this building to basically look like it was always like this. This is just a close up of, uh, of floor plans of what we're doing here. So the existing grade area is your existing school. Uh, the corridor will continue out, and these will be our two kindergarten classrooms. Uh, this small group stays the same way it was, except we'll have a window here since the original building had glass there that we're removing. And then on the second floor, it's very similar for this area. We had glass here. Now there's going to be a wall, so this will be a window. And then we have the two first grade classrooms and the stairwell, which is only for egress. We will not be entering... Uh, from the first floor into this space. This, of course, will have uh, a card reader because this is the way the teachers and the students come around to the back of the school to go to the uh, fields. And that's a, that would be the, our presentation at this point. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Lee. Sorry, Lee, I was like, is it Rich Lee or is it Lee Rich? 
It's a common problem. <laughs> um, all right. Um, John, do you want to cover off on the regulatory review and the uh, comments from our various departments? Sure. So this is a major site plan uh, because they are going over 5,000 square feet of gross floor area. Uh, it's similar to the other additions for the elementary schools um, that were proposed uh, a year ago, two years ago. I've lost track of time now. Um, but basically, it's just the addition. No impact to the rest of the site or the parking. Um, this is not going to generate a need for new parking. They're not proposing to alter the parking. So it's just for the gross floor area. Um, fire department has said that they are going to work closely with the contractor to resolve any issues with the fire code. Um, and the conservation administrator um, said that there are wetlands on site, but they do not uh, foresee any issues with the addition being located within that jurisdictional area. So um, the only other comments are the board of health. Um, and it didn't seem like they had anything of note. They said that the, their quote, it appears the designer has addressed our concerns with this current submission. So those are the comments. That's the general uh, overview. Um, for the regulatory aspect of it, the board should be looking at the site plan standards and making sure that they conform with the standards. Um, you can waive the standards as needed. Um, the waivers that were requested appear to be only plan requirement waivers. Nothing. That's that they would need to vote on those waivers. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, do uh, so. So one question for the group. Um, actually, before we get there, um, do we? I didn't see a beta review on this yet. Did I miss it, or is that not done yet? We do have a beta review. We received it. It was sent out to John on the 25th of February. We received it, I believe, the next day. Uh, and we are in the process of addressing some items. There's around uh, five or six items uh, uh, regarding uh, civil. There was a request to uh, modify uh, drawings line weights for the landscape architect. And there was a, a, a request to address the, uh, the parking uh, and the statements that we had made that we do not need any extra parking. And I did send something out to uh, Mr. Parisi, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Paradis uh, today uh, and to John in regards to that. Okay. Through the chair, the review is in the folder. It's labeled 129 Hayden Rose Street Peer Review 2-25-2002. Okay, I, I might have used beta on it. That might be the issue. No, I might have missed it. it, it as you know, my well, one of my computers I can't access those, and the other one I I thought I wanted to see, but I, I must have missed it. So, um, all right. So we've got a few items to remain to address there. Um, question for the planning board: Do you do you guys feel like we need a site walk here, or do we feel like we generally know the site well enough? Through the chair? Yes, Dave. So um, as we've experienced in the past with Marathon School as well, um, I think we should keep this at a, a high level and move it as long as quick as possible, being that it's an educational facility and we don't have a lot of jurisdiction. Thank you. OK. Jane? Sure. Uh, I just had one question for Lee. Uh, maybe hey, actually, not. sorry, Jane. Can you hold on? I just want to. Um, I just want to finish up if we want to do a, a site walk or not before we get into questions. I mean, I don't mind doing a site walk, but I don't think it's. You know, I'll just go with what everybody else wants to do. Does anybody have a strong preference for a site walk here? No. Normally, I like them, but I feel like this is a site that uh, at least. I feel like I know it pretty well and others can drive by. I think it's reasonably straightforward here. The land's already cleared. I don't think there's a lot of uh, substantial need for it. 
Right. Agreed. Okay. So we will scratch that off the list. Uh, all right, Jane, you had a question. I do. Um, Lee mentioned um, a lot, uh, I've talked a lot about windows and I wasn't involved in the first marathon when they built that out. So I'm not sure, but do the windows open or not? They are operable. That's great. Thank you. Because I know okay. fresh air means a lot. Thank you. Yes. All right. Any other general high level questions from the planning board? Fran. I have one. Uh, through the chair, uh, and probably addressed to uh, directed to, uh, to Lee or James. Uh, essentially, these four classrooms will mirror some of the existing classrooms in the building. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And was there any um, feedback provided, anything about, because the existing building has been operational, what, for three, four, five years, maybe? Somewhere in that. Yeah, like three years, I believe. Yeah, over here. Any feedback in terms of what could be done di different, better, anything along those lines, or did we just hit a home run the first time out and we're just going to replicate what we did before? Well, I, I think that uh, we don't have the principal with us uh, uh, right now, uh, but just from our conversations with the school, everybody is very happy. The only problem is we had in the design some dedicated spaces like our art room uh, and our uh, OT, uh, uh, OTPT room and uh, health room. And because of the population increasing in the town, these rooms have been uh, taken offline as those special specialty rooms and have become just regular education rooms. And this is the reason why we have to do this enlargement so that those rooms can actually function the way they were designed. So I, I, the, the, the design of the classrooms are pretty much identical because um, the, the school, the population of the employees are very happy with the design at this time. And so, sorry, Lee, just to clarify. So those, those um, specialty rooms, will those come back to the building? Yes. Okay. yes, the art room will become the art room now. That's that's one of the reasons why we don't need more parking because we're not really increasing the population of the school. Um, it is large and uh, and these classrooms will just re uh, reestablish uh, what the design design's intent was. So, so I have a question just to build off that. And I, I realized you said that the, the population wasn't going to increase, the traffic wasn't going to increase, but you did note that the, um, that I believe was it the, the, the produced sewage was going to increase. Like there was, there's some increased demand on, on some of the systems there. The and, and I guess where I, I'm going with that is to me, the biggest challenge of the existing site is that the, morning drop off and afternoon pickup are a disaster that is impacting traffic on Hayden Rose substantially as well. And I realize that that might be out of the purview here, but you know, if there's one thing and, and maybe even somebody from the school department could comment on it. Um, but when I, when I've seen literally gridlock to where the cars can't come in, the buses can't come in, people can't get out. Um, just, adding more classrooms without addressing that. I realize we're not changing the population any, but I, it just makes me a little uneasy um, that there's an ongoing problem that's gonna continue. So I see uh, Susan is unmuted and Susan, you're probably the best person to answer my, my question. <laughs> yeah, the, the very unfortunate situation we have had really since the pandemic is loss of positions or inability to hire positions. So we have not had a crossing guard at that uh, driveway location. And the crossing guard really functioned in moving the traffic in and out, um, you know, getting cars so that they could turn. And we have not been able to hire that position. So I agree, we, you know, we need somebody stationed at that driveway and we're hoping Someday we'll be able to hire that position and that will certainly help to, to move the traffic along Hayden Row. I, I would also add to that, that we're, um, we're working with the principal to try to uh, figure out a better way to pull cars in and get cars out. So we're um, 
or stack cars inside the space better than what we're doing today. <laughs> so we've um, we just started talking about those measures um, over vacation, and hopefully we can implement something soon. So we, we we're very well aware of the the traffic issues down there, and uh, we are taking steps to address them. Yeah. Okay. So so I guess my question is, and I we'll probably talk about this longer, and but. Um, from what you're saying, there, there's not, and I just want to make sure this isn't an opportunity to, to redesign anything on the site to help improve traffic flow of people coming in and out. And it sounds like what you're saying is that with a crossing guard, and I'm, I'm hopeful that as people start taking buses again, that that'll also, you know, as fewer people are dropping off, that'll also improve. But just want to make sure that we're not losing an opportunity to update or refresh traffic flows through the site um with this addition so i will say that uh when we finished the marathon school we did bring back the traffic engineer a couple of times to re-review and and just make sure that ever that the site plan was adequate and he did agree that that it was adequate i do believe that the pandemic has really caused issues um as you said parents are still not really putting their kids on buses so we really hope that a couple of things will start to fall in line and we can really start to ease this up. All right, thanks, Susan. Uh, other high level questions or comments from the planning board? Yes, Jane. I just had one. I heard a comment um, a few weeks ago from, I think it was one of the school committee members that, um, that corridor where the schools are draws over 4,000, you know, students and cars and uh, teachers and other people into that whole section. Is Was that an accurate statement or not? We, we don't have a traffic study that says there's, that it draws 4,000. So I, I that, could have been conjecture because we have 4,000 students. Okay, total. so it's probably more than 4,000. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. But, it, but what I'm saying is, uh, you know, there's, uh, yeah, middle school and high school that starts at one period of time, and then there's an hour in between. And then you have Hopkins and um, Marathon that starts. So the amount of traffic that goes through all day long, Sure, but but we don't have that as a, an official traffic study that points to that. That's okay. I was just curious, but I do want to say that if that's the case, I think you guys are doing a really great job getting people. That that's a lot of people getting in and out of there in a day, and it's a it it is a nuisance for an hour or so in the morning and an hour or so in the afternoon. But other than that, I think you you know, it's a, you guys do a really good job. I just want to throw that out there. Um, so if we go to our outline, the next thing we would do is go through the decision criteria uh, and then a waiver review and then standards and findings. Um, I, I want to just pause and I want to see if there is uh, any, if there's anyone from the public that has wanted to, to ask a question or comment. Um, we do try really hard to incorporate public input here. Um, is there anyone from the public that has a question or a comment about this um, proposed addition? Okay. Um, just wanted to check. I saw a few faces on here that I didn't recognize and uh, just wanted to make sure that um, if people were calling in that they had a chance to, to comment. Um, uh, through, uh, through the chair, could I ask one question? Sure, Rob. So this, um, I'm trying to remember from prior uh, school committee meetings and town meeting and, and so on, but the school, was Marathon School originally designed to have this add-on, these add-on class, these additional classrooms um, in that location? I know the high school and the work that's being done there, it was kind of designed to augment the high school with additional classrooms and additional space. Was the a marathon school originally designed for, for this kind of add-on capability? I don't remember. I think it was. If I can, uh, through the chair. Sure, uh, go ahead, Jim. Yes. Um, each MSBA project 
uh, as it moves its way through the process of schematic design, design development, et cetera, um, does have to include evidence that expansion has been considered in some indication of how that expansion would work. And um, I think as Lee was indicating, uh, the area that is being considered for the expansion, the roadways that work their way around it, both the main drop off as well as the fire lane, initially in the initial design were swung wide enough to avert having to remodify or relocate those roadways. That was part of that planning process uh, that was done initially. And my follow on question is, is there any more, is there any other space that uh, where additional classrooms could be put in the future that wouldn't require more extensive roadway, parking lot, kind of site plan alterations? Or is it, this is the one opportunity to add four classrooms and then it's, if more space is needed, well, we, there's going to be a more extensive change because I don't see the town stopping to increase its population. Again, through the chair, um, our, our team has done studies for the district to consider what other addition areas might be considered around the Marathon School. Um, there, there are a handful remaining, but they're negligible in terms of the result that could come from them. And at some point, you will start triggering requirements for cafeteria and gymnasium, et cetera. It just gets to a place where some of the base core education elements like library, cafeteria, begin to be affected by the overall size of the population. Um, so there are some that are possible. Uh, I, I think, again, it would have to be a study that would dictate whether they're prudent or not in terms of acting on them. But certainly the four classroom addition that is being acted on was seen as something that was cost effective, um, educationally effective and ultimately a, a prudent decision in terms of recommendation. And through the chair, can I ask one last question? Sure. Good with our current kind of, I know there's, uh, I attend a number of school committee meetings with our current uh, population increase in students in kindergarten and first grade, when would Marathon School, what year would it be, um, would we predict that the school would not be big enough as, as it, after this edition? Well, we, what's, what's a, what, I'm sorry. Um, let, let me, let me, well, let me try to define it a different way. Um, with this addition, how many years will we get before Marathon School is uh, once again undersized? At this point, um, the population actually at, at this point of the year has gone is going to go down. But because at this time of the year, it's never actually what happens by the time the summer comes where more people are coming in, we usually end up with the same amount. We do not know if this is correct, Susan and Tim. We do not know at this time uh, what's going to happen in two or three years. And, and a lot of this growth was due to, uh, is it the legacy homes? The development that was on 135. Yeah, but we have to have some kind of modeling, I would think, that estimates school population increases over the next several years. I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to think that, that, that we have some modeling and, and predictability there that we designed to. Susan? Yeah, so if I can add, um, what we are entering now is the Elmwood feasibility study. And so part of that feasibility study, in addition, we will be looking at the, the growth of all of our buildings district wide. So we have our enrollment planning um, you know, the plan in terms of where we'll be over the next 10 years. And we also have what the MSBA says will be our average um, student popula population in 10 years. So as we look to the Elmwood project, 
Um, now the MSBA has allowed the Elmwood project in as a two, three school or a two, three, four school. So when we look at those options and we discuss those things with the community, it will become that second uh, question of, if you build a two, three based on those enrollment projections, then what also happens to Hopkins middle school, the high school and marathon if you build a two, three, four school, again, what happens to those, those other buildings? Um, so we'll be embarking in that uh, endeavor based on the enrollment projections that we have. But in addition, in the, in the near term, uh, similar to what we've done now, so if we build these four classrooms and in a, a few years we need classrooms again, we would probably go back in and use the art room, use the health room and, and put those uh, subjects back on a cart. But we'll, you know, the, the whole um, mission will be to see how long does that take us before we would need to potentially break ground. And as Jim said, um, you know, outgrowing our common facilities such as cafeteria, library, et cetera. So we'll be looking at that um, I don't have that exact answer for you tonight in terms of what these four classrooms will do based on, based on our projections. Jane? Um, if I could have a follow-up question um, to, I don't know if it goes to Susan or Lee, but is there a possibility of adding a third floor? Because I believe the current marathon school is two stories. Is there a possibility of adding a third? And in your um, planning for a new school, wherever it might be, um, could you plan for three stories, even if you don't um, build it right away? Is that, is that a potential or a possibility? So, so Susan, I'll, I'll answer that question in a second, but I just, after we answer this one, let's, I don't wanna get into an overly speculative design oriented discussion, just given what's in front of us as a, as a site plan review. But um, I appreciate the question, and Susan, if you wanna answer yeah, that the, one. Yeah, so, and I'm, I, I don't wanna speak for um, Lee because obviously I'm not an architect, but I don't believe you can add a third story to the existing building because there's engineering and everything that would change. As we look to the Elmwood School, um, a higher, uh, three-story building is more of what I am looking for to uh, decrease the footprint and allow more green space around a school. Um, as, as we said, that's, that's way out into the future. Uh, one of the other options that we could also be looking at if uh, the Marathon School continues to grow even beyond our projections is where could we put the preschool? So that way we could keep the K-1 within Marathon um, but again, that still is putting a stress on the, on the common, the um, common academic things. Um, but, you know, possibly being able to grow into the preschool area and figuring out where to put preschool. So we, these are discussions that are ongoing. We're, we're talking about them all the time in terms of where we're going to put all these students. Um, so I do appreciate the questions. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Susan. I appreciate that additional context. And I, I, I can only imagine how much you guys are talking about this with a lot of people. So um, good questions. And I know that we all are thinking a lot about this and, and trying to think of ways that we can um, resolve this. But um, our role as the planning board is really just to review what's in front of us at this point. And I'm, I, I'm sure there'll be a lot of other discussions townwide about how to manage the, the increasing uh, demand on our schools. So I'm gonna propose this, um, just to stay on target. Um, I think uh, if the applicant is open to it, we I'd like to continue this um, to our March 21st meeting. Uh, my hope is, is that we can have um, the items identified by beta closed out. Um, I don't think there's a, a lot more for us to go through. It's really just a formality of, of making sure that stuff's addressed and um, that we've properly captured conditions um, and whatnot. But uh, is that amenable to the applicant? Yes. That would be Fine yes. Okay. 
All right. So then on that note, um, I will entertain a motion to continue this hearing to our March 21st meeting. So moved. Mary Larson Marlowe. Rob Benson, second. All right. Assuming no further discussion, we'll vote on continuing the hearing. Mary, how do you vote? Mary Larson Marlowe, yes. Rob? Rob Benson, yes. Fran? Fran Young, yes. Jane? Jane Moran, yes. Dave? Dave Paul, yes. Sundar? Sundar Sivraman, yes. Shahadul? Shahadul Manan, yes. And Gary Trundle is yes. So um, thank you to the applicant. That was really nicely done and um, appreciate you entertaining our extra questions and uh, hopeful that, that uh, we should be able to get through the other details on this uh, in a couple of weeks, but um, super helpful just to have the overview and get everybody thinking and processing this. So appreciate you. Thank you very much for everybody. Thank, thank you everyone. Thank you. Good luck. thank you for all your work. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, okay. Connolly Farm amended definitive subdivision application. And I see Mr. Markadant. Yeah, I am here. Mr. Nation and Mr. Nation and Mr. Nation, three Mr. Nations. Uh, Joe, can I assume you're going to be leading point, uh, running point for the Yeah, applicant? I thought he'd kick it off. Yes, I thought he'd kick it off. Okay. All right, let's do that. What, uh, why are you before us with this uh, proposed amendment? The board may recall that uh, we spent an awful lot of time on uh, Conley Farm uh, OSLPD, Open Space Land Preservation Development Project, concept and definitive. We received our uh, concept approval back in January of 2021 and the definitive uh, August 12th, 2021 from this board. At that point, we went over to uh, the Conservation Commission, filed a notice of intent for um, the work that was uh, within their jurisdiction. Um, you may recall that we have uh, a couple of resource areas. We cross one location, uh, 400, 300 feet in from Hayden Row Street, and we have uh, wetlands associated with a couple of streams to the east. After um, much back and forth with the commission um, and hearing their concerns about the site work in their, within their jurisdictional areas, uh, Ron made the choice to change the project. Uh, the biggest change was a reduction in density. We have gone from nine lots down to eight lots. Um, if you'd like, I can share a screen that may help flesh out some of the, these details. Sure, Joe, that'd be great. We all see that? Yes. We put this together to try and simplify the review with all the different parties. Hayden Row is here to the southwest. Here is our proposed roadway. What happened was uh, right about this location here. We chose to change the layout of the roadway. You can see on this sketch, the old cul-de-sac location was here in blue. The old lot lines are in blue and the homes were in blue. Once we eliminated a house lot in the cluster of homes, that allowed us an awful lot more room. We put a dog leg left into the roadway and you can see it here in black and set up eight home sites that you see also here in black. What that did for us was to pull the um, homes, the associate gra associated grading with some of the backyards outside of the 100 foot buffer zone to those um, resource areas that are here with the, the perennial stream and the intermittent stream. So we were able to satisfy many of the concerns of the Conservation Commission by being further from the wetlands areas. It also allowed us to take this 
basin system off to the east and pull it further from Beaver Brook. And with the extra room, at the request of the Conservation Commission, we introduced a small infiltration basin here, straight out the roadway at the northerly end of the, the project. We worked all that out with conservation. Uh, Beta Group reviewed the stormwater on behalf of the commission and the commission issued an order of conditions for that change. We then regrouped with John and asked, how do we move this forward? Because we had changes to the plan. Was this something that the board would like to reconsider? And John's suggestion was that we begin this process, um, not anew, but begin this, take up this discussion with this board to discuss these changes. And that's the reason that we're here is to take you through the reductions, the changes to the infrastructure, and then get the approval for an amendment to that planning board decision. All right, thanks, Joe. Just one quick question for me. And I see on your drawing here in blue, I see eight houses in the previous design and I see eight homes in the new design. This is okay. That one's unchanged? Unchanged, correct. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Um, okay. Appreciate the introduction, Joe. Um, John, from a staff report. What do you have to read out to us? So this is a relatively straightforward proposal. Uh, Joe went through what is being uh, changed. Um, it's going to basically be treated the same way as a subdivision approval. So it's an amendment, but you still have to review uh, pursuant to the subdivision reg regulations. And if it conforms to those, then you should grant a, an approval of the uh, amendment. Um, no comments received from departments. We have some comments from beta that they can address, but not many. Um, and the one thing I will note is that they have submitted requests for the waivers that were granted in the previous approval. Since this is amending that approval, you it's up to the board. You don't necessarily have to re-grant the waivers. You can reconsider the waivers if you want, or you can uh, basically just make a finding that the waivers that were previously granted in the previous approval are still granted um, unless the board feels that they should be reviewed because the design has changed. Um, that's really, that's really it for me. Okay. Thank you, John. Um, just going to keep moving forward here. Site visit. Uh, I know we have a few new members on the board, but I'm, I'm inclined here, given this is just an amendment, and it seems to be in a, an amendment in a direction that I, I am hypothesizing would be uh, in, this, in the direction that we would want it to. I'm going to propose that we don't need a site walk here. People comfortable with that? I would say nothing much has changed. Yeah. OK. Um, and uh, I guess what we'll do really quickly is uh, let's just take a moment um, and see if there's any uh, initial questions. And we'll start with the planning board and then um, and then after the planning board, we can get to the public if, if folks have questions. So, Through the chair. Um, yes, Shahadu. Just in general, I was wondering, because we wanna um, appreciate the time and effort that's been put in before and take advantage of uh, the approvals or the reviews as much as possible. Would it be possible or procedurally, uh, maybe John, you can help, that we can make a list of kind of direct impact because of the change, impact areas that we may wanna focus and start to uh, review more, uh, kind of uh, summary impact areas and the ones that are not impacted or maybe uh, even, uh, impacted in a more positive note uh, doesn't need further review that would help uh, summarize this. I think that's a fair approach. Um, I'm just wondering how to best go about do that. Um, and I think uh, Joe hit on a few of the impacts already. 
Um, one being um, moving that retention basin away from the resource area to adding the second retention basin in the back, which I think is going to improve the stormwater management. Um, three would be the uh, shortening of the road. Uh, it does shorten some. Um, four, just throwing this out there, that uh, one of the house locations is going to move a little closer to the Eddy property. I know that was something we talked a lot about um, on the site walk in the previous uh, hearing. Um, and maybe I'm going to open it up. And for those for those folks that were on this review previously, or for Mr. Markadon or for Mr. Nation, are there other what other impacts are we seeing from this amendment that we just want to make sure to get uh, out um, in, in front of? Well, Ron Nation, uh, 43 Smith Road. Um, one, one impact is that um, we go from needing to file eight notice of intents to two notice of intents. Um, and it could even be, could even be that all of the lots need a notice, of, need a notice of intent before. So the wetland impacts are, um, are lessened considerably. Um, I'm not sure about, I don't, I don't think that the, that lot eight got any closer to the Eddy property than, than lot nine was. I've, but I, I'm not saying it got further away, but uh, I don't think that's an impact. But um, Joe probably has more, but I think the, the, the biggest impact was the, the less of an impact with, uh, with the environment, with the, with the CONCOM and the, and the rules and regs. Yeah, and Ron, that's a good point. As I'm looking at it, I see the driveway, uh, the house itself, I, I see it doesn't look drastically different. I was... Uh... On the larger scale, I was misreading the, the drawing a little okay, bit. Yeah. So, in, uh, and we're going to, I've been talking to Wayne and uh, Wayne Eddy, and, you know, we, I've all along pledged that we would just, just push that up as much as we possibly can. And, um, and I'd actually like to take that, um, that little, that little kink out of the, the, the trail where it could go straight along the property line. And we can and we can shrub it up on this uh, on the on the on the south side to uh, to buffer uh, Wayne even better and um, it, to no no harm for uh, for a lot eight. Uh, I would and, like and to I, work. I will say that I, I very much appreciate that reduction of notice of intent as well. That's um, I know our concom friends are uh, appreciative of that. I think it's just in general less less impact on the overall site. Yeah, I was, I was I was amazed what Joe came up with by just by eliminating one lot. It just just changed the whole the whole flavor. Everything got everything got freed up. Um, really, it turned out to a much nicer plan. And that surprises you, Ron? Um, well, just one lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It was uh, very oh, surprising. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, other members of the board. I mean, I, and again, I just I think Shahadul's comment is a good one. I don't know if we have a way to formalize it. Um, but I, in general, I, I mean, are, are there other impacts here that people foresee? Mr. Through the chair, I, I, I think everything that I've seen the work Joe has put forth here is, is I think, well done. It's going to uh, you know, free up some additional wetland space. Uh, it looks like it tightened it up a little bit more on the cul-de-sac. Uh, but I think the lots, uh, you know, will be showcased and at least at first blush here. I, um, and, it, and it moves it a little bit away from the creek on the, uh, on the east side uh, as well. So, again, at first blush, I, I think these changes are pretty positive. Yeah, I would agree, Fran. And, uh, and the, the just note, noting the uh, work that uh, Mr. Nation has done with Mr. Eddy. Uh, to try to you know, be cognizant in, in, um, of, of that uh, the, the screening um, around that uh, is appreciated as well. So thank you. Yeah, I, I, 
uh, run nation. I think we have the ability to to make the project pretty much disappear from from Wayne's backyard, and that's that's my goal. Might not be the first year, but certainly the second year, um, be uh, be pretty close to that. I'm sure Mr. Hedy would appreciate that. <laughs> Um, any questions? Are there, is anyone from the public that has a, a question or a comment about this um, uh, amendment? Can I make a motion to Ron Nation? Can you make a motion? No, you can't make a motion, but you can make a comment. All right. No, no, I'll, I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, let's go ahead and keep progressing through our outline. Um, and on the decision criteria, just to reinforce, the board must determine if the proposed amendment amended definitive subdivision plan conforms to the subdivision regulations, and if waivers are requested, whether it is appropriate to grant them. If the proposed subdivision meets the standards set forth in the subdivision regulations, it should issue a certificate of planning board action determining such. Um, I think that's reasonably straightforward. And again, I, to the, the points we made previously, I think this is, uh, from our perspective, um, I think all, all the changes are um, uh, an improvement from, from our perspective. Um, to the chair. Yes, John. Uh, I accidentally left off the beta comments on the public hearing outline. Yes, I was just going to get to that because I see the beta comments are, I know the beta comments are in it. Um, and I was just going to get to that, actually. So, Phil, do you want to walk us through your uh, comments? Sure. Or I, I should say, in particular, the ones that remain outstanding. So, um, so uh, as, as was stated before, we reviewed this previously for the Conservation Commission, and Joe has addressed the majority of the comments. Um, so we did have one comment relative to updating the uh, planting plan based on the shorter road, make sure that we didn't have a disagreement at the end, when, uh, how many trees were going to be planted, et cetera. So we, got, we just got that uh, last week, uh, and that looks uh, complete. Uh, so that would be C1 on page uh, two. Um, and then we just had an, uh, a few um, uh, carryovers from the stormwater review um, relative to comments. Uh, so the, Joe has addressed the, the three outstanding comments from the previous review. Um, and we recommend that uh, conditions be included, uh, which are typical uh, conditions. So. Okay. And John, are those proposed conditions not in our, are those conditions that Phil just mentioned not in our list of proposed conditions? Um, I believe the proposed conditions are the copy of the NOI EPA signed SWIP o and plan and uh, illicit discharge statement. Is that correct, Phil? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so those are in the conditions. Awesome. Thank you, John. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Any questions about the beta review? And I, I, uh, it always makes me happy when our first hearing uh, sounds like all the comments um, from beta have already been addressed. So thank you to Joe and to the nations. Um, so moving forward, uh, waivers. So to John's previous comment, uh, we have some choices here. Um, we could uh, include a finding that uh, these waivers have already been granted and therefore we've elected uh, to not vote specifically on them. Um, or we could reconsider the waivers uh, as this is a modification to the plan. Um, members of the planning board, does anybody have a preference there? I know I have a preference, but I'll hold off on sharing that until we hear from a few folks. Fran? 
I have a thought, Mr. Chair. Um, maybe we read off what was uh, previously approved as a waiver, uh, and then you know, we can decide whether or not we just want to keep them in place as is, or review them in you know, review them individually and, and revote on each of those waivers. Because there are some new members of the, the board here, and uh, just to allow them to see what was done previously and people aren't kind of in, in the uh, spirit of transparency. That seems reasonable, Fran. Um, and John, just to confirm, the only two waivers are the ones that are listed in the packet. Is that correct? The only two waivers that were granted or that are being requested? Or, so you had mentioned previously that the two waivers that were being requested were the waivers that were previously approved? Correct. But I just want to make sure I didn't go back and look at the previous approval to see if there were additional waivers. Yes. Yeah, so the waivers that were granted were the same two, the cross sections at 50 foot intervals and the granite curb. Uh, they're proposing a modified Cape Cod berm. The, uh, in the previous decision, the applicant also requested the streetlight waivers. Mm -hmm. um, and then those, but the board decided that uh, those weren't needed. So those were determined to be unnecessary. Okay, thank you, John. So there were there were two waivers that were granted previously. One being the request for cross sections of each street at 50 foot intervals, which I think on this type of proposal, we... Um, Not necessary. Typically waive. Uh, and then the second was a uh, requested waiver uh, that would require granite curbing along paved edges with radii, radii less than 100 feet. And the applicant has proposed modified Cape Cod, Cape Cod berms uh, instead of the granite curbing. And again, I think that's another one that, that is fairly typical for us to see. All right. Thank you. To the chair, just... Uh, for my understanding, uh, the second one, uh, the granite uh, replacement with Cape Cod, uh, is that aesthetic reason only, or there was any technical or cost related driver? Um, you know, the, the rationale for it is number one, it is a, a lower cost than granite. Um, but it's also uh, easier to maintain and repair, particularly with um, snow plows. Through the chair, if I may? Yes, Joe. We also received some feedback from the Conservation Commission, uh, especially in the area of the wetlands crossing. They would like to see us utilize the Cape Cod berm at that location. Uh, Amphibians and vertebrates have a harder time climbing that vertical face of the granite curb, and the Cape Cod berm would make that process for wildlife trying to cross from one side to the other easier. So it carries a little extra uh, weight in that area, as the commission would like to see us maintain the Cape Cod berm. Interesting. Thank you. Any other questions or comments about the requested waivers? All right, um, so back to the original question. Um, I'm personally comfortable with a finding that recognizes um, that because they were previously approved and we don't see uh, that the amended, the proposed uh, amendments are not substantially different with regards to those waivers that we um, do not reconsider them. Um, I second that. Is that people comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys know how I generally try to avoid redebating things that we've already made decisions upon. So I, I think this kind of fits within that category. Okay. Um, so from a findings perspective, uh, the proposed finding would be that the board finds the proposed definitive subdivision plan conforms to the subdivision regulations um, 
And that um, previously requested waivers will not be reconsidered um, as the as the plan changes do not uh, have a significant impact on the previously requested waivers, something to that effect. John is avidly wordsmithing right now to right. tighten that up a little bit. <laughs> John, if you weren't a town employee, I'd buy you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be okay. It's under fifty dollars. <laughs> exactly what I was going to say, Jane. Oh. Uh. <laughs> uh, so I said. Um, so I'm just going to read all the finding, the whole finding. I move that the board finds that the proposed definitive subdivision plan conforms to the so subdivision. Sorry, the proposed amendment. to the definitive subdivision plan conforms to the subdivision regulations and the previously requested waivers granted as part of the original approval are to remain in effect. Perfect. In my opinion. Any discussion on... Attorney. No, he should have been an attorney. It's great. It's great. <laughs> All right. Sounds like everyone's comfortable with those revised findings. All right, proposed conditions. Uh, number one, after finding that it was in the public interest and not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the subdivision control law, the planning board uh, waived strict compliance with the following provisions of the rules and regulations related to the subdivision of land. Uh, we are not reviewing any waivers, so I don't think we need this condition, do we, John? No, we can strike that. All right. Uh, next one, a town clerk certified version of this decision shall be recorded at the Middlesex County Registry of Deeds prior to the issuance of building permit for the work that is subject to this decision. Three, all conditions contained in the decision for this redevelopment project dated August 12, 2021 shall remain in full force and effect unless modified by this decision. Four, no building permits may be issued on the eight building lots to be served by the road shown in the plan until the construction of, uh, of ways and the installation of municipal services is secured by a performance guarantee. In order to establish the amount of the performance guarantee, the applicant shall submit to the board a professional estimate of the cost to the town to complete all work approved by the plan and remaining at the time a cost estimate is submitted. Instructions as to the preparation of the estimate and its content are contained in section 7.6 of the subdivision regulations. The amount of the performance guarantee shall be approved by the board. The guarantee shall be provided to the town prior to the issuance of building permits. Number five, an agent of the town shall be given the opportunity to observe excavations for each infiltration basin to confirm soil texture and seasonal high groundwater are consistent with design assumptions. The applicant slash developer shall notify the town one week prior to this uh, prior to this work being started in order to allow for the town to coordinate these observations. A copy of Notice of Intent EPA and signed uh, SWIP shall be provided to the Planning Board and Conservation Commission prior to construction. Eight, the applicant developer shall provide within the O&M plan a BMP map updated to include new infiltration basin. And nine, the applicant developer shall provide a signed illicit discharge statement prior to commencement of construction. Um, I have just one question for the group, and um, Mr. Nation already commented on his uh, willingness to work uh, with the screening from the Eddy property. Um, just, just curious if that. Uh, I, my inclination is to to not add another condition because I I don't see the location substantially impacted from the previous plan, but. Um, there was anything else I'd consider a condition to be that one. And I'm, I'm just curious if the board has an opinion as to whether or not we want to consider an additional um, condition there. The chair, yeah. was yes, there, a, did we, and maybe this goes to, to our principal planner, was there a condition that we had on the original decision that 
spoke just to that point that the chair mentioned about additional screening around the Eddy property for lot number eight or nine. I, John, I, do you by chance have the original decision and conditions up? Yes, I'm reading through it now. As you read it out, Mr. Chair, I tend to agree with you, but some something tells me that there was, I could be wrong, but I thought we had something in the other talk about that. Give John just a second. Yeah. And I, in general, um, no offense to Mr. Nation, but when we when we have commitments, it's always helpful to define them in the conditions. So I don't see it in the definitive, but the, I'm wondering if we put it in the special permit. So I'm gonna look at that now. We have a condition number 16 that says the applicant shall provide additional plantings within the area subject to the waiver for a buffer area in order to increase screening within that buffer area adjacent to the property at five college street. And then 17 says the applicant shall provide stormwater basin screening, which shall include water tolerant shrubs and bushes. These plantings shall be shown on a landscape plan submitted as part of the definitive subdivision plan process. Fran, does that, um, do you think that addresses? I, 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 I do, Mr. Chair. I, I think if, you know, all those previous conditions hold um, from the prior approval, I think that, that, and it specifically calls out the property at Five College, I think it, I think we should be okay. Yeah. And, and again, I, I'm also just cautious about instituting new requirements that are, um, not a result of the changes in the amended plan as well. Um, so I, I don't know if, uh, if folks think otherwise, but I'm, I'm comfortable not adding another condition there. All right, any other, any further questions or comments on the uh, conditions? No, okay. Um, <laughs> final comments, and we'll start with the board. Um, any final comments from the board? Seeing none here. Any comments from the public before we uh, move to a vote? All right. Well, um, sounds like we're ready for a vote. Um, so, um, I will entertain a motion that the board approve the amendment to the subdivision plan, um, with the findings and conditions that were previously read aloud, uh, by the chair and the principal planner. Mary Larson model. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a vote. Uh, Mary, how do you vote? Mary Larson Marlowe, yes. Rob? Rob Benson, yes. Fran? Fran Dian, yes. Jane? Jane Marin, yes. Dave? Dave Paul, yes. Sundar? Sundar Sivaraman, yes. Shahadul? Shahadul Manan, yes. And Gary Trendle is a yes. So that motion carries unanimously. Um, and that means that we can go ahead and um, close the hearing. So I'll entertain a motion to close this public hearing. Mary Larson Marvel, so moved. Under Sivaraman seconded. All right, any further discussion? 
Seeing none, Mary, how do you vote? Mary Larson Marlowe, yes. Rob? Rob Betson, yes. Fran? Randy Young, yes. Jane? Jane Marin, yes. Dave? Dave Paul, yes. Sundar? Sundar Sivaraman, yes. Shahadul? Ahidul Manan, yes. And Gary Turner is yes. Uh, to Joe and the nations, thank you. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. Sometimes when we reduce just even one house, this gets uh, a whole lot cleaner and simpler for us. So we appreciate you coming before us with these changes and um, best of luck to you in the project. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Um, all right. So I, I know I mentioned previously um, minutes, but I, I don't think those were, I don't think we have updated minutes to review. Am I right in that assumption, Stephanie? Through the chair. Yeah, I had some technical difficulties, which basically caused me to have to rewrite an entire set of minutes. So I'm sorry to hear that. It was, it was between. Mary's going to have to buy you a beer too. <laughs> <laughs> that was not, um, I, I noticed a small issue. And when I was started to change it, the whole thing just, I was like, nope, uh, nope, not, not even. <laughs> we, uh, we've all been there. I guarantee we've all been there. Yeah. Maybe not in minutes, but other things. <laughs> um, all right. Well, um, that's it for tonight. So um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mary Larson Marlowe, so moved. I did my in second. All right, assuming no further discussion, we'll vote on adjourning. Mary? Mary Larson Marlowe, yes. Rob? Rob Benson, yes. Fran? Randy Young, yes. Jane? Jane Moran, yes. Great meeting. Dave? Dave yeah. Paul, yes. Sundar? Sundar Sivaraman, yes. Shahadul? I did my yes. And Gary Turnell's a yes. So thank you all. Great meeting, good discussion, efficient. Have a good night, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Great. Good night, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night.